Hello friends, this presentation is a part of NME ICT project sponsored by MHRD Government of India. Let's start a discussion with introduction to cell line culture and vaccine production. Currently, maximum vaccine manufacturing methods are based on classical egg-based technology. Almost all leading vaccine producing companies are working hard to develop new and novel methods for preparation of vaccines. Most efforts they have made till now were based on improvement of currently available licensed egg-based vaccines. All these companies are running to increase production capabilities and mechanize maximum manual steps in egg-based vaccine technology to satisfy the demands of the next seasonal campaign as well as to create prototypes of pandemic vaccines for clinical trials. All these manufacturers are functioning with international agencies like World Health Organization, the National Institute of Health and European Medicines Agency on the improvement, licensing and making of pandemic vaccines on a global scale. They are, there are various advantages of cell culture technologies over egg-based methods like the need for embryonated chicken eggs from managed biosecure groups get eliminated, the upstream and downstream processes get automated, the potential for contamination by viable and non-viable particulates get reduced, the time needed for the organization of egg supplies get eliminated, production would be faster, initial purity would be higher, they could increase seasonal vaccine supplies when numerous strain variants are essential. They would significantly raise global supplies on pandemic influenza vaccines. Cell culture based vaccine production. This is the robust and reliable technology which could be a best practical alternate for the vaccine producing pharmaceutical industries. First, the desired virus is propagated and harvested and then downstream processing parameters like purification, filling and packaging of the vaccine are required, which are same as the currently available egg-based methodologies and pharmaceutical methodologies. This method uses cell line. The process can begin once a cell line is infected with the desired seed virus in a fermenter. The most critical need is the seed virus. The media used for cell line proliferation are not susceptible to infectious virus strain as embryonated chicken eggs are. This process is appropriate for large scale vaccine production and the process parameters can be cost effective. Typically, Cell culture vaccine production technology can be run in batch size of practical scale which is sufficient to provide vaccine quantities for expected demand. However, till date no vaccines have been certified using this technology. But Chiron has already submitted mock-up reports to European Union regulatory authorities for review, approval and a license application for a cell culture based avian influenza vaccine. Which are the steps which we need to follow to produce this vaccine? To begin bulk production, the virus should first cultivated in a fermenter having many process parameters to control temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen and other factors. For mass cultivation of cells, mainly two methods are recognized in the industry such as microcarrier cultures and free cell suspension cultures. In microcarrier cultures, the cells are first attached to microbeads. In the presence of nutrients, the cells grow and proliferate covering the beads evenly. As high surface area to volume ratio is provided by microbeads, it leads to high cell densities. Once a bead is covered, the cells are displaced, detached and allowed to retach to reach another round of cell growth on the surface of the bead. In case of free cell suspension cultures, higher volume of media are required to achieve the same results because the cell line proliferates only while cells are growing freely in the nutrient medium. Though the scaling up of the system is easier and there is no limit to the volume. 
cell line selection. The cell line used to propagate the virus in huge quantities must be quick and capable in cultivating the desired virus. It must be appropriate for a wide variety of viral strains. It is necessary that the cell line be capable to grow in a chemically defined synthetic medium which does not have animal derived constituents. It should also be accessible for industrial processes. Similarly important, if the cell line has not been approved earlier by regulatory agencies, the necessities for licensing, licensing should be known and legalized. Serum-based media. There are some disadvantages with serum-based media. Acceptance standards for serum can differ as much as, much as 20%, which could lead to batch to batch variations during fermentation. Possibilities of contamination of serum with advantageous agents. It can be challenging to isolate the target protein from the serum protein during purification if the target protein is attached to a serum protein. For large scale cell culture use, a serum based medium is not always available. Synthetic media. There are some advantages with synthetic serum free media. It is much better defined media than serum based media. The possible source of infectious agents has been removed. There is much less batch to batch variability than for serum based media. The purification of the desired protein is easier as it requires fewer steps and a lesser cost. Synthetic media contain readily available non-animal derived components that are, that are relatively easy to store. Lastly, shortages are unlikely. Removal of residual DNA. During selection of a cell line for vaccine production, one most critical step is the removal of residual DNA from the end product. Generally, regulatory agencies are providing necessary gui guidance for continuous cell lines. Continuous cell lines must not have tolerance for advantageous agents or other contaminants. The removal of DNA must be much more systematic. Testing models have been defined to measure potential risk and to confirm safe use by the public. There are three strict regulatory requirements for certifying a new cell line for use as a substrate in cell line culture preparation. There must be records to support the complete elimination of the cells from the final product as well as to confirm that the cell line does not carry any transforming agent into the final product. Documentation must be there which confirm complete absence of genetic material from the cell line in the final product that may otherwise cause tumors in animal models. Finally, records must indicate the removal of infectious and or oncogenic agents from the final product. The strict regulatory requirements are proposed to protect the public from changes in the immune system caused by extraneous DNA. A complete description of the cell line is compulsory to meet licensing requirement in any country. To express the influenza virus, currently following cell lines are used per C6 EBXTM, it is a stem cell line derived from chicken embryos, Vero, it is kidney cell from the African green monkey, and MDCK in this median Darby canny kidney cells used in Chiron. MDCK cells are famous to produce huge amounts of virus and need easy downstream purification. Though this cell line has not yet been approved by regulatory agencies, it would be a significant biochemical engineering achievement if an influenza vaccine applicant used cell culture manufacturing that contains M MDCK cell growing in suspension in a synthetic medium. Vero is newly licensed with regulatory organizations but does not express huge quantities of virus. Vaccine Manufacturing and Formulation Suppose a cell line can express large quantities of virus and regulatory agencies will support it. One has to think whether the cell line can develop with the industrial means, whether we can grow it in a fermenter and which type of culture that is a free cell suspension culture or micro carrier can be used. Both these methods have engineering challenges. 
The cell line must be grown in a nutrient medium which may be either synthetic that is serum free or a complex having animal derived components like protein or serum. The risk factor is less with synthetic media if they stimulate the growth of the cell line. But the presence of serum creates a safety hazard as well as introduces a potential source of contamination. So the use of synthetic media has increased significantly. During vaccine formulation and manufacturing by cell culture process, first the decision of type of vaccine that is whether a whole virus vaccine, a split vaccine or a subunit vaccine should be finalized, then qualified and validated. Most of egg based vaccine are split or subunit vaccines, but a vaccine for pandemic influenza is most probably to be a whole virus vaccine. First cell line propagation initiates with the small scale proliferation of seed cells after thawing. Then cells are inoculated to the fermenter vessel containing specific nutrient media. Once a predetermined cell density reaches in cell line, the virus is inoculated and starts to proliferate in the cell line. Then the virus is harvested approximately after three days. Then after the virus is released into the supernatant and the cellular debris is separated by centrifugation. All these processes occur in a clean, closed environment. Subsequently, the complete virus can be purified, fragmented and ultra purified as a subunit. Initially, ultra filtration is used which is frequently followed by treatment with beta propiolactone that deactivate the virus. Ultimate splitting of the virus is followed by ultra centrifugation. This ultra purification process is fundamentally similar to the egg based vaccine ultra purification procedure. Because of that the resulting purified subunit vaccine is same as egg based vaccine in composition. After that remaining most important task is to complete the licensing process. Phase 3 clinical trials in Europe have revealed equal safety and immunogenicity of cell culture influenza vaccine strains and traditional egg based vaccines. For both formulations the protective line is well beyond the lowest limit. In the United States phase 1 and 2 studies were accomplished in 2005. Adjuvants. Adjuvants are constituents which are added to vaccines to increase antibody production and the immune response of the receiver or to decline the amount of antigen that is dose size required in the vaccine. The last option is the almost effective way to increase vaccine manufacturing capacity at globally. Till date the only two adjuvants that is aluminium compounds and M59 have met regulatory standards for safety. Aluminium compounds have been used safely for many years and M59 is licensed in most European countries. Since commercial operations initiated more than 25 million doses with M59 are administered. So one can understand that cell culture based influenza vaccine production has many benefits as compared to egg based vaccine production and should be licensed by regulatory organizations in near future. Adjuvants are not only effective but also increase global vaccine manufacturing capacities by antigen sparing. Thank you. We welcome your questions and feedback. Please visit us at our website www.elearnmicrobiology.com.